John Clinton, this could be a very uh, uh, in-depth piece that we're going to do about housing in, in Harlow and surrounding areas, about Gilston. But just to go back, why is the proposals for, for the Gilston um, Garden Town a good thing for Harlow? Well, so, I mean, for, for many reasons. I mean, the, the first one is, is just we need housing. I mean, that's clear national posi position, um, but, but also uh, in and around Harlow. Um, so that's the, you know, the first thing. We're in a desperate shortage of housing. There are 3,500 people on, on Harlow Council's um, waiting list for, for council housing. Um, so there is a, a genuine shortage of, of all types and tenures and, you know, affordability and, and what have you. But, um, but for me, this is part of a sort of a, a bigger picture. Um, I, I keep talking about this four-legged stool, and there are, there are four important bits that are inter highly interrelated um, that are necessary to you know, regenerate Harlow, to make it you know, the vibrant place uh, it is and, and could be, um, to fulfil its potential. And, and those four bits are around uh, jobs uh, and the economy, uh, they're around infrastructure, they're around housing and they're around skills. Now, on, on jobs, um, lots of progress is being made, uh, and, and I can see the, you know, the, the trajectory of where that's going. We've got Public Health England putting the National Science Hub in Harlow, um, uh, and, and the headquarters of Public Health England as well. That's going to generate you know, about 2,500 um, jobs on site, but with a knock-on effect for you know, support industries and, and, and what have you. There's going to be up to 5,000 jobs in the enterprise zone. You know, um, that's making great progress, so Arrow and Raytheon have um, taken occupancy of the re newly refurbished Nortel building, and it is fantastic, by the way, I went around there recently. Um, they've committed to Harlow, they're expanding their operations uh, in Harlow. The next phase of that is going to be open very soon, work on the data centre started, the access roads for the bit that Harlow Council owns, um, um, at London Road North as it's called, where there's going to be you know, a world-class um, science park, you know, the first tenants, so Anglia Ruska University are going to um, put their MedTech Innovation Centre there, we're going to have a grow-on sort of high-tech um, space that the council's going to build, all of that's going to happen quite soon. Um, so from a, a jobs perspective, you know, I can see where that's going, you know, but we need all the other things to support that. So that's the first leg of the stool. Um, the second leg um, is around housing. So there is a, a shortage, as I've said. We need a, a full range of tenures. Uh, yes, for the people who are working in these, in these places, um, but also you know, genuinely affordable uh, housing, some social housing, you know, houses to rent uh, uh, and what have you. The third leg of that is infrastructure. I know this is a thing that uh, when people talk about Gilston Park and the recent announcements uh, or other developments in and around Harlow, that's the thing they focus on, and, and rightly so. So you know, th there are issues on, on transport, uh, particularly road, but in, in rail, public transport, issues around um, health infrastructure, so GP surgeries, but the hospital uh, as well, um, and, 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 and other um, things of, of that nature. Um, so, you know, um, and then the final thing, and I'll, I'll, I'll come back and link all these things together, is around the skills. So to make sure that Harlow people have the right skills and opportunities to take advantage of these, of these jobs and, and, and things that are, that are happening. Um, so um, on the infrastructure bit, you know, um, I think the first thing to say is that you don't get one of these things without all the others. You know? So you don't get new jobs without the housing and the infrastructure. You don't get new infrastructure without the housing and, and, and so on. So you can't just say, well, um, yeah, we need you know, new junctions on the M11, we need you know, a new crossing to off the River Stort, we need a regeneration of the town centre, um, but I don't want any more houses, you know, um, because you know, you, you, it doesn't work like that. Um, somebody has to fund it, there has to be, and that doesn't necessarily mean government, either local government or central government, private industry and what have you, needs to see that there's an opportunity here um, to invest in Harlow. So it's about bringing all those things together as part of a, a, a complete package. And, and we are, you know, um, so the headline this week has been around um, the Garden Town announcement. I'll cover that in a bit more detail um, shortly. But there's loads of stuff going on, you know, I mean, so I spend quite a lot of my time um, you know, talking with the, the South East Local Enterprise Partnership is where a lot of government um, funding is funneled through. Um, you know, I've had meetings with the Crossrail 2 Growth Commission and the um, London Sands and Cambridge Corridor Growth Commission. Uh, we have uh, conversations obviously around Junction 7A um, and, and you know, for tracking the West Anglia Main Line is you know, another thing on my shopping list and I wrote to the Chancellor just before the last budget on a, on a number of these um, shopping list items. Um, We'll get those if we can demonstrate that you know um, Harlow is going to be a sub-regional growth centre in, in this area. Um, that there's going to be investment from you know 
um, developers, from you know, private industry, um, from retailers, and, and, and what have you. And, we'll, and, and that will bring all those things together. Um, and there'll be you know, some government money, hopefully, um, and the noises that are being made by government are encouraging. We've got to see the results of that um, yet. But um, So yeah, it's about bringing all those things together. Um, so the Gilston Park development is one component of that complicated jigsaw, that interrelated jigsaw. Um, so the development itself will do several things. Um, so, so one is it will add the sort of critical mass that will encourage you know, employers and retailers and you know, leisure operators and, and, and others to invest in Harlow. And we've seen you know, the investment that the Harvey Centre owners are um, adding capital you know, with the new cinema and, 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 and development of the, the old M&S site and, and, and have you as you know, part of that and their proposals for um, further developments to the north of the town centre. Um, but you know, it, it's about bringing all those things together. Um, so it adds critical mass. It will also provide some direct funding. So, so the developers of a you know, development of that scale have committed to provide the sort of if you like, on-site infrastructure, so GP surgeries and schools and community facilities in the Gilston Park area. But they'd also have to contribute to you know, other infrastructure um, developments. And that includes, for example, you know, another north-south crossing across the River Stort, um, um, uh, widening and improving the existing um, uh, crossing from Eastwick um, to, the, to the town, town station. Uh, you know, there'll be a significant contribution from the developers there. And, and, and also, you know, in terms of um, making a contribution to the, the redevelopment of Harlow Town Centre it, it, itself. So, you know, so it's, it's important in itself, providing housing. It's important because it will provide, you know, um, funding directly for infrastructure and regeneration and indirectly through that sort of critical mass thing. And the fact that the government has recognised this, uh, not just Gilston, but, you know, the, the wider Greater Harlow area as, a, as one of its garden towns, um, is also significant. Look, the, the half million pounds we got um, as part of that funding deal, which is a lot less than we actually bid for, I might add, um, clearly was not about building new stuff. It's about um, enabling the three councils that are involved, so East Hearts and Epping Forest and, and ourselves, getting a joint strategic team, agreeing the master plan for the whole area, understanding in detail, not just sort of arm waving around what infrastructure is required and where and when, um, doing all that technical work, um, you know, the modelling and the planning and, and, and what have you. Um, so that's, that's you know, helpful. But the fact that government has recognised actually this is a you know, significant garden town development, with all that comes with that, you know, um, so the infrastructure and, and what have you, is also important. So it makes it far more likely we will get the investment in the new roads and rail and hospital uh, and, and what have you. So, you know. Can I jump in now? Yeah. That's a long opening piece there. Um, just to go back, um, you said about, will there be a thought, can just get something straight? Because I know the people of Stop Harlow North aren't quite as keen about this whole thing as you are. B, A and B, the affordable housing aspect, you know, uh, and that is a very strange term, isn't it? Affordable housing. Yeah. Um, uh, but where will that be a benefit to people, you know, uh, who are looking to tip for people of Harlow? I don't know, you know, who are trying to get their first steps on the on the housing ladder. Right. So a, a lot of the mechanics and the detail of the have, have yet to be sorted mm -hmm. out. Um, that's the first thing to say. Um, so. Um, You'll know that uh, East Hearts and Epping Forest are, have recently concluded their consultation on their local plan. But one of the comments that Harlow Council made was, you know, how are you going to address Harlow's affordable ha housing needs? So, look, I I'll, I'll be honest, um, if I had my way um, and I could wave a magic wand to make this happen, um, I, I would like to develop a sort of an urban development corporation, um, we've seen that before in, in, in Harlow, that covers the whole area. And it's that thing, um, that, that body, that would then do things like allocation of social housing or what have you, that, that then we don't get hung up on the fact that there happens to be a county border <laughs> running um, um, between here and there, um, or the district borders between Epping and, and, and East Hearts and, and ourselves. Can I just jump in because you yeah. mentioned borders, and I'm sorry to yeah. take away from question. Are they flexible? Could we see them change over the next 10, 20 years? So, um, so the short answer is yes, we could. I, I mean, I'll, I'll be honest, the Boundary Commission um, I mean, for example, they've been looking at the parliamentary boundaries um, recently, and, uh, and they've got a whole lot of suggestions. Have tended to treat county borders as sacrosanct. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I think so, you know, district borders um, inside inside counties, you know, um, there have been changes. I mean, you know, Church Langley was in in Epping Forest, and he's you know, moved into Harlow um, not that long ago. Um, so I think that that will be a more interesting conversation. Um, but yeah. 
I don't think anyone's um, overly interested in wholesale reorganisations of the government right now. There are other priorities. Um, but, but there are issues around you know, so who gets allocation rights to the social housing element in, in major new developments and how much of it is it going to be, uh, have yet to be um, sorted out. And, and certainly those are conversations that I've had with the leaders of both Epping and, and East Hearts. Um, and, and, I, and I think this garden town um, um, thing will help provide the vehicle for, for furthering those conversations. Could we get some time scale right here? Because Gilston or whatever goes on to the south of Harlow as well, this won't be coming on stream in 20, well, will be built and people will uh, open in 2018 or 19, won't they? No, so I mean, when the announcement was made a couple, uh, a couple of days ago, two, three days ago, um, about um, up to 10,000 houses in Gilston Park, there's a lot of, oh, you know, someone's going to be plunking 10,000 houses there. So let's be clear. So um, East Hearts have just finished their consultation on their local plan. In that local plan consultation is only the first two and a half, three thousand um, houses um, for for that for that area, um, and that covers the next fifteen years. Um, so, so anything beyond that is going to be beyond fifteen years. So, you know, look, I've not worked out you know, what the build-out rate is because um, it's all a bit speculative beyond the, what's in East Hart's local plan. But we're talking thirty-year time frames here. You know, so it's not going to ten thousand houses going to appear tomorrow morning or next year or even in the next decade actually. Um, so that does give a time to get all the other stuff um, so sorted out and aligned, which also has quite long lead times, some shorter than others. But you know. Would you hope these plans, as ones we've mentioned, are more in the spirit of Gibbard or more in the spirit of Church Langley? So, so the, the, they're definitely in the Gibbard principles. I mean, if you look at the sort of master planning that um, was originally done um, by, by places of people who were the landowners and, and the, the promoters um, of uh, Gilson Park, um, it's, it's absolutely very much about this, you know, separate self-contained communities, separated by green wedges, um, with the community facilities inside, so, you know, local shops and, you know, and, and, and schools and, and what have you. It's very much about um, the Gibbard principles. And, you know, our local plan, Harlow's local plan, is going to be coming out later on this year for consultation. Um, but you will see, you know, the very strong theme running through that is that, you know, we're going to hold very dear to the Gibbard principles because that actually is what makes Harlow Harlow. So, you know, the unique structure of it, um, the green spaces. I mean, everyone from outside Harlow assumes that Harlow is um, at best suburban, but an urban sort of dense um, thing. Actually, less than half of the, you know, so more than half of the land is actually open land in, 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 in the Harlow, Harlow border. And actually, Harlow is quite small, it's only 11 square miles. So, so it's very much in the in the in the Gibbard principles, um, um, and you know, we, we do want to make sure, regardless of whether there happens to be a county border running the two, that it is part of the greater Harlow um, um, you know, settlement uh, community. Um, that it's you know, the linkages are there, both in terms of social linkages and you know, physical transport linkages. Um, so yeah, so so I'd absolutely say you know um, that. Um, I mean, I've spoken many times to um, places for people, their race representatives, and they're very much, uh, you know, um, genuinely into um, the, um, the given principles. Uh, and it's also you need to recognise that places for people are a not for dividend organisation. They're, they're not the uh, your usual, you know, high scale um, developer that's, that's about making you know, profit for shareholders. Mm -hmm. um just to go back on the local plan for a second, I know some bits you can speak about, some kind, but there's a just down the corridor when my camera is down there, there's a, a feeling of tension in the last few months between yourselves and Conservatives, and <laughs> camera never lies. Um, and will that tension increase? And, and, and what are the pressures on you to deliver a, a local plan timetable-wise in 2017? Look, so, um, look, what I'm about is, is trying to get the best for the whole of Harlow, um, over the sort of medium to long term, not only in the short term, but yeah, you have to recognise those two things. So it's about the whole of Harlow um, and, and, and you know, the Harlow area uh, and over you know, a, a significant time frame. Um, and, and the reason I start there uh, is that um, clearly there's going to be tensions about specific bits at specific times, whether that's you know, Trunk 7A or you know, Gilston Park or you know, a build out of New Hall, or you know, whether it's developments to the south and and and, uh, and east of uh, sorry, south and um, west of Harlow, um, and you know, I, I think you'll note from the from the, the cabinet meeting you referred to, I've got a bit of my frustration. Look, some of this is just, in my view, just a political stunt. You know, I mean, um, that 
Yeah, look, individual ward councillors absolutely will, will need to stand up for their particular ward and their particular patch of, of, of Harlow. And I'm a ward councillor as, as well. You know, I've got public health engineering you know, coming to, in my backyard almost literally. Um, um, but you have to look at the bigger picture and, and, and the longer term picture. Um, so, so I've no doubt that the Conservative group will you know, um, make points, some of which are legitimate, some in my view less legitimate. Um, and you know, it's absolutely right that ward councillors stand up um, for the very hyper-local views of, of their uh, ward constituents. But, you know, I come back to this, you have to look at the bigger picture. And, and you know, we have to look at all of these you know, components, how they interrelate with each other, under, understand that you're not going to please everybody at every um, uh, moment. Um, but, you know, I, I genuinely believe that in 20 or 30 years' time, if I'm sort of round, I, mean, I almost certainly won't be sitting in this office, but. Um, um, yeah, I'll be able to say, yeah, I told you so. <laughs> but I genuinely believe that, and, and that's what we're sort of working very hard to get all these bits uh, in, in place. And you know, when it comes down to a specific thing, and I'm going to build N houses in this particular spot, whether that's in Harlow or on the edge of Harlow or, or whatever, yet yeah, there's going to be people who are object to it. Um, I say um, some for different reasons. You know, where's the infrastructure? Where's the parking? Where's the health facilities? Um, and you know, some slightly more parochial um, uh, reasons. But we have to get through that. We genuinely have to get through that. We're going to make a, a difference to Harlow as a whole, to the Harlow community as a whole. We have to, you know, look at all of these things. There's going to be some difficult decisions. Planning is always one of those things that's, you know, controversial. Um, uh, but um, yeah, I think people, yeah, I think if people understand the the interrelationships that you know, if we get all these things together, and, it, and it, you know, it's not a given that it will just happen. Um, a lot of hard work has happened and will continue to happen to try and bring these things together, then that will make a difference to, you know, um, whether you, um, if you're a parent, whether your kids can get a job, whether they can get, you know, a house to live in, you know, whether they can live in a, you know, a pleasant, vibrant, you know, regenerated you know, community. Those are the things that I'm, I'm looking at. And, you know, I, and I think in principle, you know, all the councillors in Harlow Council are up for that. But, you know, there are some tensions in particular spots and, and for particular reasons, some which... So your final message to the people of Harlow and outlying areas is, is please keep, please keep faith, keep patient and believe. Well, well, yes. I mean, look, and I'm, I'm not I absolutely. I want to hear people's views, and a lot of you know, commentary I've heard, whether it's on social media or, or, or otherwise, you know, has been you know, legitimate. You know, so, so there are issues. So the hospital, for example, needs urgent investment now in its current site, and we need a new hospital in and around Harlow. I don't think it's going to go in North Wheel, by the way, but <laughs> but yeah, but we are looking at actively uh, with developers about where that could go. We're you know having conversations with government ministers and others, um, public health, uh, sorry, and NHS England and the CCGs, um, sorry, clinical commission groups, uh, and, and, and others about you know um, when and if that can that can happen. So so yes, I'm not saying just you know trust me, you know <laughs> I'm a councillor, I'll get it sorted out. I'm not saying that, um, but. I do want people to genuinely believe that we recognise the problems with infrastructure, um, in particular, across a broad across the spectrum, and we're working very hard to solve them, but also that you're not going to get those improvements, regeneration of the town centre, you know, um, new crossings across the river store, unless you get all the other bits, including a um, significant number of new houses. John Kempner, thank you very much for your time.